Fora TV. The world is thinking. Let's focus for a few minutes on what the real problems are that remain out there. One of them certainly is the machines. And we seem to have careened from uh, an attempt to deal with the embarrassment of the hanging chads, getting rid, by and large, of the punch card machines, with this spasm to replace them with the state-of-the-art touchscreen uh, 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 video uh, efforts that now are wrapped up in enormous controversy uh, because they can be hacked easily, a move to try and add a paper trail. Uh, how much of the problem that we have out there now would you say is in getting reliable, uh, safe and effective voting machines? Well, I think we've made some real progress since, since Florida. At least people are now more aware of what the potential pitfalls are. And I think there are a lot of states and localities that are planning in advance uh, to, to try to avoid problems. But you point out the machine issue. This very much is a case of, of one size does not fit all. The, the wonderful, I think it's Justice Brandeis line that the, the states are the laboratories of democracy. This is a good argument for letting states figure it out because if you'd had one federal system, I think it would have been the electronic machines. We would have shifted the entire country to them at the very time that scientists were saying uh, and, and people involved in the engineering, you know, there's some real problems with these machines. Uh, instead, we've seen a patchwork uh, and there are a number of states that have moved to the new electronic machines and are now moving away from them or are, have moved to them but have required that votes that are cast on these machines produce a paper trail so that if the machine breaks down in the middle of the election and goes blank, you have some idea of who voted on it and you can go to the paper to try to reconstitute uh, the, the election. So we are getting there on, on machines. We, there are a variety of competing technologies and they're being used in different ways. Often, uh, I don't know what you're finding, but in my polling place, now I have choices. I walk in and they say, do you want to vote on the electronic machine or would you like to vote on the uh, paper machine where I fill in the bubble and it gets scanned in, the OptiScan. So I think people seem to be doing both. Uh, the other lesson we've learned is if you're going to have machines, you need to have backup paper ballots so that if something goes wrong, people can continue to vote. Uh, in South Carolina this year, I was uh, down observing for the McCain campaign in the Republican primary, uh, horrific day, snow, ice, rain, sleet, miserable, not a day you want to be out, and we got a report that an entire county wasn't able to vote on their electronic machines. Now, I've heard of people tripping over cords and so the machine is unplugged, but I had never heard of an entire county tripping over cords. It turns out that they had tried to do the right thing and test the machines in advance of the election by putting in votes and making sure they registered. They didn't, however, follow the rest of the instructions, which were to clear the machines before election day. <laughs> the machines are preset by somebody who wants to make sure we don't have fraud, and so when you turn them on, if they already have votes in them, which they did, the machine goes blank and won't work. An entire county of electronic machines that wouldn't work, and people standing at the door banging to get in at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, they didn't have backup paper ballots, and so they, quote, went to paper. They sent workers down to the 7-Eleven and they grabbed anything that looked like you could write on it and came back. Well, it worked because it was a Republican primary. You only had a limited number of candidates and people could write their name on it. would not have worked in a general election with a long list of offices. But, but you should, just to stop here, it turned out that Slurpee won uh, that uh, <laughs> county. So. Well... It did turn out that they were counting votes that night on matchbooks. <laughs> so, we have this voting machine issue, and I, I think that is something where states are trying to deal with. Based on the sorts of tales I've just told you, the best practices now, which the Secretary of State of Ohio will talk about this afternoon because she had a very messy primary here uh, in terms of machine issues, is every polling place should have extra paper ballots so that if something goes wrong, you can shift to the, 
the paper. But you're still going to be left with a couple structural issues that you mentioned, Norm. Yeah. One of them is that we have a system, unlike many democracies, where the people who are actually running the elections are not nonpartisans. They are active partisans. We elect the Secretary of State. They usually have an R or a D after their name. Um, we elect local election officials and local boards. So it is sometimes hard to have confidence in the system when something goes wrong if the people who are going to make the decision are known to everybody, as they were in Florida in 2000, to be either Republican officials and the Bush chairman of the state or Democratic officials and the Gore chairman of the state. Uh, you get too much predictability on those partisan lines. So how we could ever move to a less partisan, if not completely nonpartisan system of administration, I think is a real problem. And, you know, uh, Catherine Harris, of course, uh, was the embodiment of that, uh, brought up again in the movie Recount. Uh, you should all know she's uh, announced that she's running uh, on the basis now of this new uh, renewed celebrity for the Senate in Florida in uh, 2010, and this morning she announced she'd won that race. Uh, so <laughs> We don't even have to worry about it that that election won't cost anything. <laughs>